Usually, before I go shaking my tits for the press, I like to go see how the professionals do it. Some might say the chief of police has no business in an institution like this. But in fact, it's the quietest and safest place in town. You won't run into any reporters, nobody gets into any fights, nobody drinks too much, nobody even raises their voice. The place is owned by an elderly gentleman who knows how to keep things under control. That's why I never invite my friends here. I wanted to make an exception for my 60th birthday, but most of my colleagues are young enough to be my sons, and they'd rather just hire prostitutes. Why stare at some boobs when you can take the whole package for yourself? But there's none of that in our club. Even looking too long is considered indecent. You can get an occasional glimpse, like by accident. The rest of the time you just pretend that you're immersed in conversation, or just come by for a drink. Doesn't mean these gentlemen wouldn't want their bald heads smothered in tits. It's just that nobody says it out loud. My younger colleagues might call it hypocrisy, but I call it the good old-fashioned manners. Good manners and leave the rest unsaid. She agrees to unbutton her blouse, and we agree not to pay too much attention. The girls are on a quiet prowl, too. They're looking for a way out of their cramped rooms. Maybe make friends with some wealthy patron with a pacemaker and dentures. Everybody wants something. But we have to control ourselves or we'll all turn into libertines and prostitutes. Hell, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, jumping up on the table, arms held high, yelling, Shake it, baby! No idea how I got so barbaric. Wow, what an introduction. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Let's Play. This time we're playing a new game called This is the Police. I just downloaded this on Steam this last week. It came out on August 2nd. And this is a game uh, by a company called Weepy Studio. Uh, they say it's a strategy adventure type game uh, that is set in a city where things aren't going so well and that you play the chief of police um, and, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're about to lose your job, and you have a little bit of time left on the force before you will be, uh, kicked out, fired, whatever, and you have to choose to be the kind of cop that you want to be, and, uh, you know, for this playthrough, I think we're, what we're gonna do for this playthrough is... We're just gonna we're gonna, we're just gonna get down and in, in, in into the depths, the deep darks. We're gonna be a bad cop. We're gonna play this game as the bad cop, and we're gonna be corrupt, and we're gonna stab people in the back, and I don't know what else. It's gonna get awful in here, but that's what we're gonna do. I have not played any of this at all. I have I've seen some of it online. I followed some other YouTubers who are playing it, and uh, you know I've been anticipating its release, um, and since you know since I work full time. This is the, this is, you know, I only have a few days a week where I can work on YouTube, so um, I haven't had a chance to play it, so without further ado, this is The Police with your friend, the Mighty Bushube. Huh, all right. All right, well, I guess so we read the headlines. Mayor Rogers is a sex maniac. City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boyd's resignation. So that's us, we're Jack Boyd. We're the chief of police. Uh, it's uh, July, and the town is uh, Freeburg, I guess. Uh, Mark War II to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. All right, let's go to work. All right, come on, car, start up. There we go. All right. Man, as the chief of police, you can't afford to have a nice car. That car didn't look nice. 
When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. I like the art. I know I like the music This is so the far. first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. All right, here we go. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Hmm. Interesting. So I wonder if they're trying to give you clues on how to play it. Ah, uh, here we go. All right. Good morning. Yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise or did you know about it in advance? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, man. Wow. Well, I don't like the last two. Um, ah, surprise. I thought I'd be working as a policeman for another five to ten years. I just want to serve the city. I was very surprised, of course. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, bad cop. I'm going to throw the mayor under the bus because uh, I want to make him look bad. Do you really know the name of your successor? Do you already know the name of your successor? Um, yeah, just no. Don't tell them anything. Of course not. And I don't think the mayor's office knows who it is either. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy, Francis Kendrick, said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Uh, yeah, let's just make it look like I'm a good guy. It's hard to say, but I can't think of a more deserving candidate than Captain Kendrick. Yeah, see, so I gotta make it look good to everyone, you know? Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Jeez, I'm gonna say no comment. Oh. No way. Like, I'm not going to say any... I'm not going to make any any allusion to crime because I'm the chief man. I need to look like I have everything everything together. Usually I prefer to answer all your questions, but in this situation, I've got to say no comment. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Definitely not. I have to keep that... I have to keep that solid. Even though I did say a minute ago I want to throw the mayor under the bus, look, like, for the press, you gotta try and make it look good. And that comment back there at least throws some question into what the mayor's doing. Maybe. I don't know. That's just not possible. Mayor Rogers is a true professional and he makes his decisions carefully. There is no place in our jobs for hard feelings. Good answer. Good answer. Thank you.
How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and, uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire any time soon. One hundred and eighty days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a, he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Oh. oh my god, seriously? I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> Checkpoint. Well, I guess maybe that must, like, save the game. Jack Boyd on his resignation. Ask the mayor. Next police chief still unknown. Jack Boyd confirms police cooperation with the mafia. What? How did I confirm police cooperation with the mafia? I said no comment. Oh, man. Jack Boyd on his resignation. Ask the mayor. Next. Jeez. Oh, wow. So already the decisions you make have huge impacts on the story. Like, I didn't confirm cooperation with the Mafia. I don't want to piss off the mob and I don't want to piss off the police. Oh man. I see how this works. Alright. Like, I'm barely ten minutes in and I'm loving it. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. 
Everybody just takes snacks from the machines, or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. All right, here we go. So now I guess we're playing the game. Would you like to receive tips about how the game works? Uh, I'm a six-year-old police chief a few months away from retirement. I don't need anyone to tell me. <laughs> yeah, show me, show me what you got. Freeburg PD organizes upcoming work assignments into shifts for today and tomorrow. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress and detectives continue their investigations. You can freely move employees between shifts. All right. All officers are detectives. Oh, all officers and detectives possess several important characteristics. Professionalism shows the overall efficiency level of your policeman. A figure around 150 is considered average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable, while those who profession whose professionalism is considerably higher than average are a safe bet, even in a pinch. An individual's level of professionalism may rise and fall over the course of their career. All right. Energy shows how tired your policemen are. Okay. The less energy your people have, the less reliable their work, and a policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel or make a critical error on the, on the job. Your employees lose one point of energy after each working day and restore one point after each day of rest. All right, well, that's good to know too. Part of what the Mighty Bashub hopes to achieve here is that you get to learn how to play the game and play it wisely so that you can have a good experience when you play games because that's all the Mighty Bashub wants. The Mighty Bashub wants you to have a good gaming experience. Your employees don't tell you everything. Oh, hidden characteristics. Your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason they can think of to take the day off, while others like to drink too much. You can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behavior of your employees. All right. Uh, what can we... So, here's, here's our shifts. It looks like shift B is on right now and we have quite a few here's three officers who are over 150 these ones are under wow price look at the old lady price five geez mole 150 debrito and armstrong wait a minute we have an officer who's, who, whose name is mole 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 and there's a scandal of corruption in the police department and you're telling me there's a detective whose name is mole oh man all right what else can we figure out here all right i'm just clicking on the officers to see what happens and nothing's really happening it looks like everyone's full on energy nobody's tired looks like all we can do here is start the day look at this guy debrito God, look at that mustache on that guy and that hat. Look at how he's got that hat cocked forward on his eyebrow. Damn, I wouldn't want to mess with Debrito. Debrito looks like a hardcore dude. And Armstrong looks like look at look at he's got the he's got the eyes that are kind of kind of squinty. Looks like he means business, you know, Armstrong. I wouldn't mess with that guy. And Price, I don't know about Price. I think. Uh-oh, I don't know what happened. Here we go. All right. Price. I think Price... I 
think price is one that we're gonna have to we're gonna have to worry about here. Um, anyway, all right. Well, I guess the next thing for us to do is to start the day. Kochi, Yancey, Purdy, Tuz, Tuz, Su, Su. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. Subaki, Asano, Austin, Price, Mole, DeBrito, and Armstrong. All right, here we go. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, get that cigar out of here. Wow, I love the music. Oh, the music is great. Respond to calls in the bread and... Oh, responding to calls is the bread and butter of police work. You'll need to send your officers to the crime scene before the time expires. A mark on the map shows where the call came from. The farther away the destination is from the police station, the longer it will take for your officers to travel back and forth. So the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. All right. What do we got here? The easiest way to determine how difficult the task might be is to check how many units you are allowed to send on the call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Particularly risky missions give you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. All right, all right. The number of slots is not the only thing to consider. Any available information from the location of the crime scene to the presence of weapons and so on. All of this can tell you how seriously each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance until it turns into a brutal meat grinder. Oh, wow, meat grinder, really? Or a serious call can come in which turns out to be a false alarm. All right. Hit and run at the everyday mall. Well... All right, so in the next episode, we're going to tackle the hit and run at the Everyday Mall uh, because we're almost out of time here for this episode. Uh, this is the Mighty Boss Shub. The game, this is the police. Uh, it's a brand new game. I'm going to be doing a, a probably a quite a long series on this. I'm going to play the whole game through. I'm pretty sure it's got some kind of a continuous story. I can say at this point, I love this. The music sounds great. I like the animation, I like the art, I like the style. I'm really excited, like this game pumps me up as a, as a, as someone who plays video games, I feel like there's a lot to do here and it just looks great, it sounds great, it feels good. And so far I'm really enjoying uh, This is the Police. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, tell me what you think, post in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, with that being said, thank you very much. And I will see you next time, Internet. Ciao, everyone.